here's an example of what we are going to be able to build with the cast warm bracers that we're making. This is a landscape site, steps, greenways, the whole deal, and it was formed, poured in a cast form. Quick PSA before we get started, please make sure you're using proper safety gear. If you're using anything that has fumes or in an enclosed environment, use a good, clean uh, mask. We need earplugs for any kind of sawing or even some really hardcore drilling. And if you have, like in my workshop, I have vent fans that low rumble can actually damage your hearing over time. Just wear earplugs the whole time you have the vent fan running or minimize the time the vent fan is on. Wear gloves if you're dealing with toxic chemicals and generally just be smart. Anything that could damage you, don't let it damage you. Don't put your hand through a buzz saw. Don't wear long hair, clothes hanging off in front of you. All right, great. So you can make these out of pretty much anything. What I've got here is some press board, which is very similar to, it's basically what you would have on uh, like a clipboard that you'd write on in class. I'm going with a 17 inch length. And so I've measured 17 inches here and I've used a square ruler to create my draw line. Uh, we're gonna be cutting on a table saw. So whenever you cut on a table saw, the way the blade is spinning, is going to come down in the end to cause the cuts and so you want the side that's the presentation side on top so for this next board you can see it's already been cut a couple of times and you can see how the table saw roughed up its edges so we're going to flip this one over when we work on it as you can see how much cleaner and nicer these edges are and we're going to do two more cuts of 17 here so the only thing to remember when you're choosing your material is whatever surface texture is on it will end up on your final mold. Now in the case of what we'll be doing today, the outsides of the mold are going to be unimportant. It's all going to be interior mold work. However, in the model I just showed you, the outsides are a part of the presentation, they're part of the show. So if you did this out of plywood, it would have the plywood grain. You had to add, you know, pine wood has the pine wood grain. And this is why I'm using the press board. Uh, ideally you want to actually use countertop board, laminated counter laminate, but it's, that's a lot more expensive. And this works just as well with just a tiny bit more work. Uh, the big issue here is that the press board absorbs a lot of water, and I'll show you some water damaged boards that weren't sealed properly. And then I'll show you how to seal your board so that that doesn't happen to them. In recognition that everyone does not have a table saw, I have set this up instead. If you're not familiar with this setup, this is a circular saw setup, which will allow me to get a perfectly straight cut out of a circular saw. So what we have here is we have another board, right? And then it is clamped down to the table at a distance equal to on the circular saw, you have this spacer. So if you clamp it at a distance equal to that spacer, then we can set the circular saw on the table like that, and it will cut. You can see here it's pushing against this board, so it will just go perfectly straight, and it will cut that same line. It's a little bit more work. If you have a table saw, table saw is better. Um, but uh, circular saw, good circular saw is only 90 bucks or so, and you can use it for pretty much anything. So here's my table saw. On the right hand side is my square. It locks into place by depressing this lever down on the bottom. And I don't have a cameraman today so I'm not going to be able to actually show me doing the table sawing. I'm just going to go ahead and set it up and run the boards through off camera. Basically because the slider is already set on the table saw, I can just cut an infinite number of boards of the same length without having to measure them, clamp them, etc, etc. And like I said, you can get the exact same effect with the clamps I showed you earlier, but every time you have to measure properly, clamp properly, make sure it's really square, use your square ruler, and just double, triple, 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 a million times check before you cut or you're going to run through a lot of wood. Alright, so here's my finished pile of pieces. I have four of these identical boards to make the outer cast form. And then the extra piece that I cut off the long piece, each of these boards, by the way, is 17 inches long. Um, I took that and I put it back with uh, about two inches on the table saw, and I just kept running it through until I got eight of these. So the setup here is we're going to have one of these boards, and we're going to have two of these resting on the board. So I've got this just regular wood glue. And I'm going to take my parts and flip them over. So this side to this side to that. And the wood glue here doesn't have to be horribly precise because it's really just here to add a tiny bit of extra strength and to 
um, hold it while I put the screws in here in a little bit. So you put them on two of them together and you rub them around and that will distribute the wood glue. Then you get them nice and even. And then you take that block and put it at the end, squiggle it around, get it nice and even. And then we're going to get the square rule. You can see it's already pretty square. I'm going to get the square rule, which I can't really do while I'm holding this. I'm going to get the square rule, check this all out, make sure it's all square, and then we're going to let it sit for about 30, 40 minutes. One more thing to note, it's important to choose an end, so in this case it's my left side, and make sure that that is flush. The right side isn't as important as long as, and it has to be the same one on all of them, so all four left sides, because we're going to stand these up and line them up together to form a cube. So one side of all of them has to be perfectly level. You can sand and you can mess with that kind of stuff. So here we have the cast forms I used to make the larger model you saw earlier. They're potmarked, they're dirty, they have clay on them, they have plaster stuck to them, and we are going to have to clean them and sand them down completely before we can go back and cover all of them with the shellac that's going to make them waterproof and more durable going forward. Here what I'm doing is I'm cleaning up the piece with a standard plaster putty. It's got a wide flat brim which is ideal because it will not damage the flat sides when you're cleaning off the, the extra gunk. Now you should only really be using this on the bottom and the back of the piece and in fact I'm not using it on the front side because if you protect the piece properly while you are using it uh, there shouldn't be anything stuck to that side of the board, and I'm just going to do this to all of the boards. Now we're going to sand the large boards that we had messed up and get some of the shellac off. We're going to use a high grit so that the next shellac can adhere, and you can see here it creates these uh, bubbles, this waxy buildup, and you have to scrape those off or change the sandpaper constantly if you want to uh, actually get the result you're looking for. Generally, I use this Zin Zinser uh, bullseye shellac and see here it has this all natural renewable resource but don't just take their word for it here you want to look and see what's in it, you're looking for the alcohols, here it says ethanol and ethopropanol which is basically just alcohol and alcohol and that's what you want to find once the glue is dried we're going to put some two clamps on the ends here and put a screw on the left side and in the middle, so left here and then in the middle and then we're going to take the other ones off and do a screw on the end and we're going to do all three of them just like that. Alright, and our board is done. We now have our three screws here that we've got ready and we are ready to shellac. So these boards took me a little less than an hour and a half, there's some drying time in there, a lot of downtime. You can do the first two coats because it's just going to drink the shellac without even stopping. The third coat you'll be able to do on the front of the top two coats, but then you're going to need to let it dry between each coat for the fourth and the fifth coat. Make sure you get all the sides, all the nooks and crannies, and I did the other large boards the same. You can see the even reflection on the surface, totally plastic, totally glassy. That's what we're looking for, and you're done. These are ready to use, and in the next tutorial, I will show you exactly what you can do with them. All right, guys, thank you for staying through this and watching it with me. Like I said, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you all the great, wonderful things you can do with plaster cast forms. If there's any craft project or design work or art or any of the things that you've seen on my site or otherwise that you would like me to do, or a suggestion for a project, any of it, please leave that in the comments or the feedback section, and I'll actually try and do some user requests. Um, in the meantime, share it with your friends and let me know what you want to see. Thanks. Bye.